Okay, international break time, so we'll make this very, very quick. If you are watching us and you're not subscribed, do us a favour, please hit that subscriber button. You'll be in a very exclusive club of the first 1,000 people, hopefully 1,000 people, who will have subscribed to Box to Box Football. While you're down there, drop a like on the video. And also, quite a hot topic at the moment, so any questions or, or comments that you do have, put them down in the uh, comment section. But James, international break gives us a really good opportunity to have a conversation that we've been wanting to have for a little while now. VAR, is it good? Is it not good? Does it take too long? Um, are we even getting the right decisions anymore? Is it make? It, is there more controversy? Is there more to talk about? Some areas I think where you and I have some frustrations, total free ball conversation. We'll just title the video something like VAR, go. What, what, do, what do you want to say? Because I know I've got some stuff to say. Um, Jack, I'm a bit like on it where I know everybody's like VAR is ruining the game. Oh, it takes too long. All that sort of stuff. And I'm and I'm fifty and I'm fifty fifty in terms of view of it, um, ruining the flow of the game. It taking 10, 15 minutes to just look and, and get an answer right is annoying. But I'm guessing if you want to get the right answer, take your time. Um, my thing is people talk about it ruining the game. No, it doesn't. In my opinion, in terms of view of like getting decisions right. VAR averagely, Jack, have gotten the decision right most of the time. My biggest issue, go on, Jack. Can I just I just want to add to your point. Um, so guys, before VAR was introduced, uh, after studies of hundreds and hundreds of games, the review was that referees in general get it right about ninety three percent of the time. That was kind of the going rate for for football matches and referees making correct decisions. And that could be as something as easy as a throw in going to the right team, whatever. With the implementation of VAR, we're up to ninety eight point eight percent. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that's not good enough. If it's VAR, it should be one hundred percent. It's a subjective game. A lot of the rules can be interpreted to interpret it a different way. 98.8% is a massive improvement on 93%. To your point, we are 100% living in an era where we have more correct decisions than ever. But go ahead, sorry. Um, Yeah, I, I just kind of lost my train of thought. My issue with VAR is sometimes how it's used and how we want to do it for every minute thing, every tackle, yeah, every sort of goal offside we want to get it to the right detail and people are always like it's to me it's to me the challenges right now is a big thing people want to look at every single challenge oh like did he go over a little bit and sometimes your momentum would, would like take you over sometimes it's just a pure accident people want to turn it into a thing where it's a big incident secondly when they slow it down to the absolute point where it's like oh the player looks like he's he's maliciously trying to hurt a player and then and then think about the referee goes over to the monitor and like the first thing he sees is a player stood up not looking at like how it began that is the issue i have with VAR. just things like that but just tilting it a little bit and showing him a full speed of actually how the challenge looks instead of slowing it down and making it look like he's out here to hurt someone that's the only issue um to think about it that i have at this moment and people talk about the fans in the arena not celebrating it like, like not celebrating a goal i get it i get it but you will be the same person yeah going to your friends that wasn't a goal. Oh, there was a foul there. There's a foul there. We're getting what, listen, we're getting what we get. Yeah. We're like, they're doing their best to get the right answer. Jack, you mentioned it. One thing I've realized about this football game, and I've always realized it, but even more, it's about opinions. And the way you interpret something may not be the way I interpret something. The way you interpret a tackle may not be the way somebody else interprets the tackle. The way a referee looks at the game is different to a way a football player looks at the game it's different to me maybe a way a fan looks at the game it's different to maybe a manager or even somebody in the media we all interpret it a different way it's about having everybody come as a collector to know okay what's the best solution what's like think about it what's the best answer because at times in football it isn't always black and white there is a bit well, of a gray area there too well, and james let's say professional amateur sunday league as a kid whatever I have playing experience as a holding midfielder or a left back, right? Or a center back. And you have experience, professional, amateur, whatever, as a striker. It's a very different lived experience in terms of how you play in the game. How many times have you had to go out for a defensive header, right? How many times have you, my point being, the way you interpret the game and feel the game and have lived experience of the game 
is very, very dependent on how you grow up processing and absorbing football, right? Biggest thing that I can think of right now, who are the two biggest pundits commentators that we have in the game right now? Well, it's Gary Neville and it's Jamie Carragher. Yeah. I think a lot of the rhetoric and a lot of the opinion that we get is very much from a defender's point of view, right? That's a lot of the stuff that we're digesting and absorbing at the moment. Whereas, let's say it was a quite a prominent striker or a forward, they may have their different spin on it. The point being, we are getting to a point, James, with VAR, where we're debating contentious decisions, and then they're saying, well, why has it even been brought in then? It's like, well, it's been brought in because it's contentious. Best example I can give, the Kukurea penalty on Erling Haaland. Erling Haaland pulls back Kukurea's arm. Kukurea does the same back to him. It's kind of a bit of a 50-50. If I'm an yeah. official, I just let it go. They're both as bad as each other, cancel each other out. But in Anthony Taylor's eyes, in his subjective opinion, he felt that it was a penalty for Man City. You go back and look at VAR. Was it clear and obvious and a complete blunder on Anthony Taylor's part? No. It wasn't clear and obvious that it should or shouldn't have been. I have my own opinion. You have yours. I'm sure there are some other people with different opinions. The on-field decision remained. We have to remember that before VAR, wouldn't have even been a consideration. Oh. Every single egregious error, egregious error, offside by a mile, blatant handball, definite red card offence, whatever, those are now we are getting the correct result. There's nothing to complain about on a Monday morning at work, apart from the coin flip subjective 50-50 decisions. All of the horrible ones that cost people money, their livelihoods, competitions, finals, trophies, those have been, by and large, eradicated. I, I have so much praise for VAR, and every time it gets right, James, no one no one cheers, no one makes a big song and dance about it. It's just, yeah, good, that's what it's there for. But then we get one contentious one that results in a free kick or a goal kick that should have been a corner or whatever, and we have this huge debate about it and Twitter explodes. I don't get it. Oh, Jack, you know, you bring it up there, Jack. You said it perfectly right there. Let's just go back in history. Let's just mention some big games, how... VAR would have got that decision right. For instance, right now, Chelsea versus Barcelona in 2009. Are you trying oh, to tell me VAR yeah. wouldn't have given Chelsea a few penalties that day? Right. Henri's handball against Ireland. VAR would have clearly said handball there, yellow card to Thierry. Um, I don't hand know, Diego Maradona's God. punching. Diego, hand of God. Yeah, it's there for a good reason. It's right. not every freaking minute thing that we have to look at. If Jack, if that's the case, then we might as well just get VAR to referee the whole game. The, the whole game and everything, right. you know, in it. Yeah. I listen, I've accepted. Yeah. Referees are a bunch of donuts and they're going to make mistakes. Sure. I've listen, I've accepted that. You know, it is what it is. Listen, football is a is, is an, it's a human game. Players make mistakes, referees make mistakes. We have to accept that. But VR is here to clear up as much as possible to get right. the right to me to um to get the right decision. It won't be all the time. But as much as we possibly can, like Jack, the Arsenal one that um everybody goes on in the Arteta's livid about it, and I can understand you as a manager, you work so hard, and and let's say it doesn't go your way, but it works both ways. Because if that would have happened on Arteta's side, he wouldn't we, we we wouldn't have seen that much of an uproar for him because it happened against him. I'm pretty sure it will add up where he may get a decision his way, he may not get a decision his way. You mentioned the word, what is it? Clear and obvious. Yeah, was the ball going out clear and obvious? No, was the offside clear and obvious? No, was no. the push what like like was the push clear and obvious? And James, for me, no. clear and obvious is in a in a pub full of neutrals, is everybody in agreement that something is something or isn't something? Because the moment you get a handful of people going, you know what, I don't know about that. That's when it doesn't become clear and obvious because it's not clear and obvious to the vast majority. Um, again, I think the only other thing I'll touch on as well is. How much of an advantage are we getting from some of this stuff? The ball being in or out. If, if you're telling me, if, if, the, if the vehement defenders of the fact that the ball was in, if it was out by an inch or if it was in by an inch the other way, are they really getting that much of an advantage, right? In the same way, like that Kukurea, ha Haaland one, could Kukurea have done something different there? Could Haaland have done something? Do, do, do you see what I mean? It's like, how much of an advantage are they really getting? If Henri handles the ball into the goal, if Maradona handles the ball, these kinds of things and they're winning tournaments and finals and stuff, 
clear, clear advantage. If it's just these kind of one-off kind of things that keep happening, I don't know how much of an advantage is really being gained over the whole course of the game. Is that the reason you lost or were you not well prepared? Did the other team play a bit bit better than you? Blah, 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 blah. Jack also mentioned that too. That makes a big difference. That makes a big sometimes uh, what what um, managers seem to do is just just take that one moment. Granted, listen, it's hard to score a goal. It's, sure. it's really really is like it's hard to score a goal. But sometimes when your team does play trash, that's the easiest thing to do is just point out oh, that we are we are forgetting about how bad his team played or the lack of chances that was that, that was created um, from a team. And guys, we we have to look at what the the beast we're dealing with here. Set pieces. If you look, try and not pay attention to James Ward Prowse taking a corner and take a look at Thomas Suchek. Take a look at um Kufal. Take a look at Mikhail Antonio. Take a look at Jared Bowen. Take a look at what all these guys are doing in the box with their opponents in them. There's grabbing, there's arms absolutely everywhere. Every attacking set piece, every single one, we would have to look at. And I'm telling you now, by the letter of the law, we would find probably about three or four fouls in every single set piece. Do you really want to have to dissect every single corner and every single free kick that's 30 yards out to look at these kinds of things? Or do you just let the game play and anything egregious gets called? I'm kind of sick of it. Obviously, Misery loves company. And on Twitter, we love piling on to to the negatives. But I think, James, you'll probably agree with me in saying this. 93% 93% officiating before VAR is pretty impressive. If you and I were to referee a game, I'm sure we'd be idling around 68, 70%. So credit where credit's due to these officials. I know they can look a fool sometimes. No, they're, this, yeah. no, they're you have to think I, of the pressure sometimes. You have to think of the pressure and that you're right, they're human beings. My only thing about it is that I don't want to go too much on the referees because you just got to accept that to me where it is. But when people talk about VAR, I don't think the system of VAR is bad. I feel like sometimes the people who are there using it is the issue. Yeah. Ultimately, like VAR isn't um a system that's there with like a computer there. No, it's referees sitting down and helping other referees make a decision. Right. And as I said, referees' mindsets are different to a player's mindset, are different to a manager's mindset, are different to a fine's m- mindset. They go by the letter of the law. And sometimes the letter of the law can be blurred here, uh, think about it here or there. But overall, they're going by what they see, which is their opinion. And some sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. But referees do, you know, they're terrible in their own so way. Let me, let me ask you, James, hearing the audio live, hearing the audio, you're watching TNT, you're watching Sky Sports, do you want to hear the conversation while you're sat watching at home? But football's ultimately going to get to that point, Jack. You know, it's ultimately going to get to that point. Personally, no. Personally, like, if it's no, nah, I don't really, I I don't want to get too, you know, Americanized with with like the way we do stuff here, it, you, you know. I think it's less not 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 holding defense, blah blah. I'm talking like rugby, right? The the ref has a body cam. The ref is mic'd up. You can hear what the ref's saying all the time, right? And when when they go to the booth and they go, right, what are we going to do about this one? That that is communicated. And then people might say, well, there's going to pick up on a lot of swearing and there's going to be this and there's going to be this. Where's the kind of privacy aspect? As far as I'm concerned, if we want to have that culture change, if that's something we want, then it needs to be implemented. I, I would like to hear the thought process because at least then I can go, well, here's what they thought and I can I can kind of live with that. Saying that, James, I'm also happy not hearing it and then it just being leaked later when, when a big mistake is made, you know? Same, same. But... I want to hear what everybody else has to um, say about this. You know, I know a lot of people get brainwashed by listening to some, somebody like, I'll tell you this, I'm going to mention being like a, a one, a team like being sports with Richard Keys and Andy Gray. They are just the most unbearable people when it comes to that. And if you guys share their opinion, let me know. If you share opinion over Gary Neville, let me know. If you have your opinion, comment down below. Is VR good for football? Is it bad for football? Let us know, guys. This is Box to Box Football. This is Jack and James, and we'll see you guys next time. 